um, we should mention the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. As we discussed. Speak, last, speaking of wired to win, wired yeah. to compete. Yeah, CP is dialed in right now. His performance in that Denver series, after battling, you know, that that shoulder stinger that he had in the Lakers series that affected, I think, his shot quite a bit, and he was playing through pain, but um, he his performance was virtuoso. Like, it was just top-notch, um, just control of the game, pick and roll, passing, everything. Denver really had no answer for their pick and roll game the whole series. This is a problem going forward in the next series for whoever plays the Suns. Because if it's Gobert and it's the Utah Jazz and Gobert is in those drops, and I know we talk about it all the time, CP is going to eat drops alive. That's just a fact. Yeah. Uh, if it ends up being the Clippers, uh, you're going to see if they try to play Zubac at all, you're going to see a lot of what we did in the previous series with, with the Mavs. And basically Zubac by the end of the series couldn't play in the minutes that Luca was on the court. Uh, because if he was in a drop, Luca tore it up. If he was up and he switched, Luca scored on him almost every time. So uh, whoever they play next is going to have a problem that pick and roll. They're going to have to. They're going to have a hard time figuring it out. Of course, Devin Booker's been fabulous. Cool. Whatever, but the engine to me is CP running cool. pick and roll for that team. But I was going. I was going to ask you this because Devin, you know, we we praise him a lot on the show. He can. The guy's just a bucket getter. Like he can get his shot wherever he wants, uh, whenever he wants. So if you're if you are dialing up a defense to defend these two and you're talking about Chris being able to do this and you have a guy like Devin right there, like what are you supposed to do with two guards like that defensively? There's not a whole lot you could do, which is why I think the Clippers have the best chance uh, because they have enough defenders that can contain the basketball on, on switches. I think you have to switch against them, but you have to have the personnel to switch. So it's easier said than done. There was a game earlier this season when I was on new Orleans, we decided to just blitz uh, Chris and Devin pretty much the whole game and you know I don't think Devin took a lot of shots but Chris ended up with 15 plus assists they came back in the fourth quarter and they won the game the problem with Chris he's so smart you can't give him the same coverage over and over he's just going to figure it out and by the way you know he watches tape and so we had been up in pick and roll so much prior to that game so he knew it he knew where all his outlet passes were going to be and by the end of the first quarter, he had like seven assists, you know, and you're like, this is going to be a long night with this. Guy. I remember so, that. I remember that game. You guys were up like 10 or something going into the fourth. Yeah. And then and they outscored us like 40 to eight in the fourth. He literally <laughs> just flipped the switch. And this yeah. is against the, a, an NBA team, a good NBA team. He yeah. just switch, And he's like, this guy gets wherever he wants and does whatever he wants on the court. Uh, and he just took over. And it, it was it's fun to see him do that in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really happen. No, it's great. So, yeah, so I, you know, I, I don't know who's going to win this Clippers Jazz series, but I think the Clippers, uh, at least defensively, provide a little more nuance uh, than what the Jazz typically do, which is just keeping Gobert all the way back in pick and roll. CP can get to his spots. Devin Booker can get to his spots. Uh, it puts, look, Gobert's rightfully so the de defensive player of the year three times now, but with guys that can operate that well in pick and roll, it, it puts him and the rest of the jazz in a really tough, tough spot. Uh, we talked about our bold, you know, bold playoff predictions with Tyrese on last week's episode. I just want to like to give myself some acknowledgement, some credit. I don't often do it on the show. I don't often give I mean, myself credit. A little, a little early for the credit for the record. I'm just saying, you I, have I said the Suns. I said the Suns are going to win the West. It's, you're, it's looking good. It's looking you have been good on the, You me. have been on the Suns train early and often. I, so we are, one, we are one series away. I, we should mention the plan is, and obviously things can change. You're going on a little vacation this week. But the plan is starting uh, during the conference finals, we're going to go. Do you want to explain what we're going to be doing? Uh, I'm, we're, yeah, we're going to do YouTube Live uh, after some of the conference finals games. I can't tell you which games it's going to be, but it will be during the conference finals. We'll announce it on all our socials. Go give us a follow, Old Men in the Three, JJ Reddick. Uh, don't worry about following Tommy. Yeah, um, we'll worry. make sure it's out there. Uh, <laughs> go hit the subscribe <laughs> button on the JJ Reddick YouTube YouTube channel. Um, so we'll have we'll set, have analysis, reactions. We'll probably have some guests on some nights. Uh, but we'll do this. Look, we'll probably do this, you know, five to 10 times during the conference finals. And if you guys enjoy it, we'll keep doing it during the NBA finals.